Okay, live and direct from the Grande Pacific Model Railroad. Uh, we're going to go with another uh, tip and trick. I'm going to say right off the bat here what we're going to talk about. This is kind of after the fact. Most of the time when I do what I'm going to show you uh, today, it's done when there's no ballast on the track. Um... I've shown this in other videos, but we're going back and we're going to uh, fix something. We, we missed putting in some magnets. As you know, in some of my previous videos, I'm big on magnets. Um, the KD magnets. So what we're going to do is today, we're, we're going to go in and put this type of KD magnet in after the fact so when we come up here and we're putting cars into this we can do that okay see cars couple cars on couple that's the big part of the KD system that most people miss that's why those little metal things that look like air hoses hang below and people like to clip them off well when you clip them off you've destroyed the KD couple okay so this is what it's all about this is an operational railroad we operate this railroad every week now uh, and I'm not going to get into that discussion but that's Friday's uh, here is up we have a meeting and people come over and run the railroad so we did not have couplers at these two and these are the yard tracks right here at the end for the switches so when the uh, freights come in or somebody comes in and has to drop off cars or pick up cars out of this two track yard and also over here those one two three four five cars are sitting on another storage yard track where the little yellow uh, painted tie is, uh, there's no couple there either. And I think we're missing one other one. I'm going to look around. But anyway, see, we have one here. I you note the mile marker marks where it is. Got to mark where they are. You can't tell. Uh, on the ones out here in the front, we'll use uh, ties to identify them. Uh, where they stand but we need to put these in uh, to stop people having to use pick sticks try to get the cars on a couple and so forth and uh, you know hindsight's twenty twenty, so we're playing twenty twenty today uh, we've already cut two holes I'm going to go back and when I do the two at the other end I will videotape that so the reason why we have to cut them out and get it in is because you will look. You see that ridge right there? It needs to sit down. It has to be down into the bottom where the tie, it's sitting on the ties. That way the magnet is below the rail heads. Okay? So that one's ready to be glued in and we kind of we had to tear up a, one more tie on this one so we'll get either a little ballast or we'll cut a piece of tie to go in to fill in at the end but we'll do that all we'll fix all that back up at the same time since we're going to have a bunch of glue in there so then we cut just cut this one and I don't know if it fits I haven't even tried it uh I see some I see some ballast in a way but anyway it pretty much fits but I got some ballast pieces right there gonna have to get the handy dandy number one tool and uh, go after a couple little pieces that are sticking up so we'll get those two in and then we're gonna come back and cut those two in now how are you gonna cut those in with all that ballast and glue and everything already done uh, IE vibrating saw okay I'll try to set this up in video it to where you can see it 
and I do not have a uh, selfie stick. Guess I should have used the other camera on the tripod, but this, uh, I'm going to set this up to cut two in on this end. This is the tool I'm going to use to cut the ties and loosen up the ballast right where it's cut. So, uh, works real good. Uh, you know, this is another one of those great Harbor Freight tools. $34, and believe me, if you have to fool with cutting some wood where, like molding around a baseboard or something, and you don't have any way to get into it, this is the tool. Uh, it uh, works great. It got all kind of blade attachments going in, but uh, uh, we're going to go back here, fix this up, and then I'll set up and see if I can uh, get this recorded on me cutting this. We'll have to go mark where the magnets are going to go first, and then we'll come back and try to shoot that. Okay, this is the uh, item which I'm fooling with today. Notice I say code 100 couplers. I use code 100. That's why I'm cutting out. So they, they are taller, but they're stronger magnets. This way, the uh, they're below the rail heads. Uh, and uh, it works better, even though this is code 83 track. So uh, this is the product I'm using. The two magnets in a pack, <laughs> this is the product and what we're using. Again, we use code 100 on code 83 track, and that's why you see us cutting it out like we do. Uh, that way, we ensure that the magnet's below the railhead, and we get a bigger magnet. The bigger the magnet, the better off you are. Uh, if I was using homosode, I would use under the track magnets for this. They work perfectly. Big magnets. I'll get one and put it in the video. But this is what we're doing here today. Okay, this is an under the track magnet. You would put this in into this uh, before you put your track down in the cork. The, the only thing about this is to keep the field strength high on this you have to keep the metal backing that actually you can take that plate right there off but if you take that off it reduces the field strength of the magnet um, and then with that on when you put if you put it standard railroad cork on either side the magnet is a little bit higher so you end up if you shim it with a hump these things work real good if you have homosode road bed, because then you could the homosode is thicker than the uh, magnet, and you can uh, cut out a hole, put it in a hole, put the track down over the top of it, and you're in business. And it works great. Actually, you have to shim the magnet up. Have a bunch of little cardboard chips just put in a hole to shim the magnet up. But this, I will guarantee you, this magnet will uncouple your car. Okay. I have one of them in use on this layout in a place uh, things. Problem with these magnets, you can't have this on any kind of a track where you have trains passing over it, like on a main line. Because any kind of slack off on a couple, this thing will on a couple of cars. You'll be going down the track and have, your train, half your train will be left behind you. So you can't put these, you really can't put any magnets out on the main, but especially these. Uh, this was the other place where we, we missed the magnets uh, here at uh, Archie Daniel Middleton uh, Grain Elevator. Uh, we don't have any uh, on the tracks. And again, just trying to stop people from hands on, on cars and putting pitch, pick sticks where they don't need them. And a bunch of trains come through here and work it. Uh, so we'll probably work on getting some here too. Also think we're missing, yeah, Hoffa Cement should have one right here on the other side of the road. Um, we won't do the chip on loading for the paper mill because the cars have to come from out of the front so they could dead push from a magnet up there in the front. 
There is a magnet back here, I know, because I see the uh, mile marker post. There's one back there, and there's one up there by Glazer Wholesale. So we'll work on getting those magnets in today. And uh, since it's a rainy day in southeast uh, Louisiana today, it's a good day to work on the railroad. Okay. So we got these kind of dry fitted. They're all fine. And we got our glue out to glue them in place and some weights to set on top of them while they're drying. We're going to go down here and cut this because I need one of those little pieces of tie to fill in there at the end. Uh, when I cut it, I'll rob one from over here. The other thing you need in a project like this is right there, vacuum cleaner. Get a vacuum because this, when I grind, when I cut this stuff out, that vibrating saw makes a mess. So now we're going to go figure out exactly where we're going to mark these in and do it. Uh, one other comment. You, 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 this one right here, this magnet right here on the first track right here, this one, this is a close situation because that's a little curve right there. The cars pretty much have to be straight, but I kind of tested this a little bit. We don't pick up the magnet here. It works. So, uh, See, so we're in pretty good shape here uh, for what I'm trying to do here. But you got to watch, but you can't put the magnets too much where the car is curved. One of the things I'll guarantee you that may cause a problem here, and I'll just have to work around that, is one of those big long cars. The longer the car, the harder it is for it to couple up and uncouple on a curve. So uh, if you're dealing with auto cars, <laughs> which you don't see any on this road, uh, auto racks there they would cause an issue there uh, you could fix this you can fix that though in JMRI in the operation system all I'd have to do is say that the, all the cars of that's called an RBL box car uh, for hauling beer in it was an insulated box car so you could just restrict no RBLs on track one and then uh, put all the RBLs on track two because that's straight. That's not a problem. So there's always another way to skin a cat. <laughs> all right, bye. Okay, next step, uh, which would be actually for all of y'all, where right in the beginning when you determine where you're going to put your uh, magnets, you have a Sharpie. So in the case here, uh, one of the things you want to avoid is you see where the tri uh, the rail joiner, the, where the rails are joined, you don't want to get into the switch. You don't want to have it way up here because you couldn't leave the car there anyway because it would foul the next track. So you want to on a couple, at least to a point where you're past the foul point. Okay? Uh, now, the next one, uh, the next car on coupler, because of the foul point, we're going to be in this area right here. So what we did, we, we determined exactly where it's going to be. And uh, then I take a marks a lot, mark the tie behind it and in front of it. So everything in between needs to be cut out. So we mark both of them. And... Uh, so the ones in between have to be cut out. Now, when you cut, I'll show you this. Let me get a pointer. Got to have a pointer. Uh, when you cut, you want to cut just to the side where the, where the uh, plates, fish plates, and the spike would be. So you want to cut right along in there. Okay? Again, this works a lot better if you do it before you ballast. But since we've kind of missed this point apart, we're going back and putting them in because they are, for this railroad, very important. Um, you could use a Dremel tool to do this. A uh, Dremel wheel would cut these, these uh, plastic ties right off. And your track's so well glued in here, it's not going anywhere. 
uh, once we cut these out. And as you will see on the other end when we finished, because uh, I'll finish that before I finish this, or the other ones, uh, this will, uh, you won't be able to tell uh, it was done after the fact. Okay, I'm going to think I'm, we've got this set up, and I'll take a picture of my uh, selfie stick here. <laughs> Anyway, we have the uh, camera lined up, and we're going to turn the vibrator on, uh, cut her on, and cut this. And we'll edit this to make it fit into the uh, video. Okay, let's hope that all worked out. Now, I'm going to slowly move the uh, smartphone and let you look at my selfie stick. Mm. <laughs> Necessity is the mother of invention, okay? So that was holding the uh, phone while we did this. So now we have this. This is what we have left over after we did the cutting, okay? So that's why I tell you, you got to have a vacuum cleaner. Uh, we got pieces over here by my wife's Mercedes. Brought that home from a train show one day, and I says, Honey, I went over to Houston, bought you a car. Brand new Mercedes. She says, I don't want a Mercedes. And I reached my pocket and handed it to her. I says, There it is. So, <laughs> by the way, that's not the right scale, but that's we won't get into that. All right. Okay. Regular old white glue. I've told you all a couple of times in many other videos. Uh, I don't know what gallon this is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's over here. We buy the blue glue by the gallon. Right there. Buy the white glue by the gallon, and then we just refill the little bottles. Uh, I am sure on this layout that's gallon seven or eight. When you start putting down cork, like I showed in some other videos where I use big sheets of cork and other part of problem, this is a big layout and I've used a lot of glue. So anyway, one of the things we did, we salvaged that little piece of tie off that cut job we just did so we can fill in this gap up here in the front of the switch. So that's what we're up to now. Uh, we're going to put the glue in and get it all uh, glued up. All right, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so we got the glue in the hole. Now you take the magnet, take this one over here, and you put it back in. All right. Now, one other thing I'm not showing here, which I will go get, is... I don't have a uh, uh, wet rag because I need to wipe that glue off the track. You don't want it to dry. Now, I'm going to get this piece of tie in here and uh, locate it. All right. Remember, white glue dries clear. So as you may see a lot of glue in here, until I get this situated, uh, it's not going to make a difference. Now, the other thing I need to do, and I'm going to wait till this dries, I'm going to go get some, some uh, ballast and come back and put it in. Uh, I think we got it now. Anyway, I'm sorry. So we've got situated that piece of tie in here to fill up some space. And we'll let this all dry. 
like so and then when that dries I'll get a little ballast and sprinkle it in here I'm gonna go get some uh, a little wet rag and wipe off the track right now while the glue is dry wet because we don't want to fight with the glue to get it off track that gets to be a project okay. okay so they're both in place both glued in place white glue why do we use white glue do you I don't use anything else unless I'm putting two pieces of wood together that I don't want to come apart that's the only time I ever get into using yellow glue or carpenter's glue white glue on everything because you can soak the white glue here everything and eventually uh, everything will come loose and you can get things up uh, you know you decide to make a major change in some of this railroad like a throat or something you have to soak the uh, ballast and everything and it takes a while but eventually the white glue the water will will soak through and you can get everything loose and up about a, one switch we've had to pull up because of uh, a problem with the switch and, and fix it and then put it back in place you know and then we just literally soaked the switch and it, when the ballast all got loose then we just vacuumed it all up then we cut the switch out repaired the switch and put another one put it back in place but anyway uh that's uh we leave that sit there this is a uh you know not a short-term drying project and that's only really two good weights i got that really weigh so i don't know what happens when i get down here guess i'll just go clean up holes and so forth and get ready and dry fit all these magnets in and, and the magnets sit down in there and they're below the rail heads that is the key magnet has to be below the railhead otherwise you're going to have problems with all the little trip pins and that's true of anything on the railroad it's like that grade crossing right there all the center pieces they've got to be below the railheads now marking these magnets here you see the little ties that are laying around i'll go get some of those and we'll put those right alongside because you can't see the magnets when the cars are over it. And as an operator, you have to know where the magnet is. Back there, we use the uh, stand-up uh, mile markers. That way, uh, the operator can see where the magnet is. Okay, so we've cut out these two down here. Now, you need to see where the cuts are right on the other side of the fish plate and the what's supposed to be the spike we well, have to make sure that there's nothing sticking up on the end that's where that tool right there comes into play got to make sure all those little because when you cut off the plastic you end up with some burrs you got to cut all those burrs off it's going to stop the magnet from going down in a hole okay so we have now got carried away again that one's one too many but uh, uh, again I saved a piece right there to fill in okay uh, and again when I glue that all in place and I've already checked this one example of the check right here let me get this a little squared up you can you can feel it with your fingers but here's the example of the check you take a stick there's a little piece of one by two or something I have laying around you can see there's definitely a space between the top of the magnet and the bottom of that piece of wood as you slide it back and forth and that's what you want to see that magnet has to be below the head of the rails otherwise the trip pins, which are all set to be above the head of the rails, will get hung up and you'll end up with problems. So anyway, both these are ready to be glued in place. Uh, we'll glue those in place. Uh, I have one back here. You know, see where the tie is? Right there. 
that marks the magnet okay because as you can see operator can't tell there's got to be a, there's got to be something that tells the operator where the magnet is in this case it easily gets covered up by a car there's another example I use the mile marker post to mark where magnets are okay now out here we'll just use one of these ties now can't use those ties we ain't moving them ties uh, we were while we're doing this we're running around with a vacuum cleaner and catching a lot of dust and stuff uh, everything on this railroad is glued in place you see the ties right here you can't move those ties they're all glued in place but uh, we'll have to get a tie here and a tie up at the top just just to give a mark now these two magnets probably will always be exposed because you can't really allow cars to stick out here on the ends because that would foul the switch so it's not a case here of a car where the magnet would be over it same thing here on this so uh, in a mogul track for this depot uh, you can't uh, leave a car sit there on the magnet it's too close to following the switch so you have to push it back that's where you learn how to dead push okay and the magnet back there that has the name on it uh, it would never get covered up because you have to spot everything on the other side of the road and there's actually three I think actually four cars that get spotted there, but I see one that's in the wrong place. <laughs> oh well, Eagle Eyes catches everything. The Ellen and Dixie Rail Hopper uh, belongs up on the uh, uh, Old Coal Materials place. It belongs up there on that uh, dump rack. So I guess somebody missed that one. Okay. Case where uh, up going up that hill. You have to have car, you can't just take the engine, go get that car and push it out there because you can't put the engine out there. Too much weight. So you got to have some cars to idle the car out there to set it for the dump zone. That's just one of them little things. Need to put a sign up there, you know, no engine past this point. Okay, oh well, something else to do. Alright, so we're kind of doing a finish up touches here. Another tip here, the old mayonnaise jar. Uh, you can see in it some old ties. One time we used to play with doing a little hand laying track. Well, mm, we kind of got away from that a long time ago. That's not our thing. So, but we kept the ties and we used them for, uh, you know, doing things. Well, keep all the parts in mayonnaise jars. Uh, that way you can see what's inside the box. All right, we took one out. At least I thought we did. Oh, yeah, we did. Right here. So there's the tie. So you come over here, and you say ties. Oops, that's too long. Now, again, may not necessarily be required at this point, but uh, at this particular location, but we'll put it in just to be consistent. So we'll mark it where it's got to be cut. We'll cut it and come back. Okay, so we got a tie cut. And uh, we're going to put a little glue. Take the uh, tie. Set it in the glue. And that's our marker there. So the operator will know when the cars are over the magnet where his where the magnet is and when he's coming up to it so he can disconnect. So we'll do that for each one of them just from the standpoint. Now granted you can see it when the cars are parked in the siding, but if he's trying to bump a car in here from the middle of his train, then the magnet's gonna be pretty well covered up. And the one thing I want to make a point about, even with the Oh, oil cars. Uh, I'm looking at this in the same angle as my eyesight. So again, seeing the, 
magnet underneath the car gets to be a little interesting. Uh, give you a real good example here. Uh, can't see the magnet at all, can you? So you need to identify where they are. Okay. All right. All went up with the finishing the project. Okay, so we'll put a wrap on this. Uh, go back. I think we'll probably next time get some brown paint out. I'll go paint the ties that we marked black. Go back and mark them brown. Uh, but other than that, I think this is it. We got our markers for where the uh, magnets are, the pieces of uh, tie. Uh, I got the two down here. These are done. And uh, we're going to go over here. And we put in the one for this other track here. This is stub in yard track. This where those five cars are sitting. Those are, uh, it's an overflow space kind of gets to where you get into designing the whole town of Rock Ridge and all the industries to make it work to have a local run and have movements of the cars we found out after we kind of finished it we needed more space for cars to be here for the local to work from and or from freights coming through to pick up and set out. Well, we had this big long track sitting here in front of where we put the chip cars into the chip unloading area for the paper mill. And I said, well, it's just track sitting here. So we just took a segment of track, put it into the computer, and this becomes uh, yard track three. So you know, got to be flexible when you're going through things. So next we're coming down here and uh, we're going to put in magnets at the ADM grain elevator. Oh, ooh, it disappeared. <laughs> okay, we moved the building. And uh, one back here for half a cement. We keep your feet in concrete. And then we'll have one more over here uh, at the peak paper mill. This is the car track right here that the chemical cars go on. We haven't gotten the uh, lines in for unloading the chemicals, but that's where you park the chemical cars and the uh, mud cars. And we need a uh, uncoupling ramp up there right by that ground throw. So that's the last one to get put in. We're going to stop, though, here and go make this video and post it on uh, YouTube and uh, all the Facebook channels. So I hope this helps somebody understand how all this uh, uh, works uh, so that we can uh, uncouple the cars without touching them. It makes life a lot simpler. Okay, and it's uh, uh, any questions, please ask.